If you have been following my rain barrel and solar system setup, you would know that I placed all of my electrical components in the same tote as my water pump. I knew that would be a temporary setup and I wanted to quickly test the rain barrel watering system concept. But today, I will bring you along with me as I upgrade my solar panel from a 20 watt panel to a 100 watt panel and show you my process for separating most of my electrical equipment. Since I already own a 100 watt Renogy solar panel, instead of making my own solar panel mount, I wanted to slightly go the professional route and buy an aluminum frame made for my solar panel I purchased. I was lucky enough to find a refurbished frame on Amazon for about $59, which is what I'm currently putting together. Also, this video is not sponsored by Renogy, they just happen to be the company I purchased my panels from on Amazon a few years ago. I highly recommend their panels due to the price and performance, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to find out more about their solar panels. As for the frame, I would say the frame is really well built, but the way some of the components were engineered to bolt together needs some improvement in my opinion. Also, it's worth pointing out that this solar panel mount was intended for a pole mount solar application. However, I saw pictures of others on Amazon using it to mount to a home, so I figured I would give it a shot. But be sure to check with the manufacturer before you install the product differently than what it was intended for. Next, it was time to disassemble my existing solar setup for my rain barrel system. Next, I took some quick measurements for where I wanted to install my solar panel mount. When it came to mounting the solar panel frame to the lower portion of my wooden deck, I purchased some stainless steel bolts that were the same diameter as the included U-bolts so that I did not reduce the overall strength of the mount. Also, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please smash that like button to help encourage YouTube to share these videos with others who may find it helpful and it also supports this channel. If you happen to be working on a similar application and working alone and need to fasten a bolt with a nut, you can place a crescent wrench or vice grips on the nut if there is something for the wrench to brace up against. After my solar panel mount was finally installed, I could then install my solar panel. After mounting the solar panel, I spent some time researching the proper way to install some of the electrical components and different breakers that may be needed to increase my knowledge in this area. 
There are still some things I need to learn since I'm still in the testing phase for my electrical setup for this process, so I will not be going over all the details of my electrical circuit. Also, please understand that the content in this video is not intended to substitute professional advice and always seek the advice of a qualified electrician for any questions you may have regarding electrical or solar work. I also ended up using an upgraded solar charge controller since it had a built-in display screen that could show me the battery status, incoming solar amps, and other important information. The breakers are primarily used for overcurrent protection. To help reduce the chance of my solar system causing a fire, I used a ground fault protector device made by Midnight Solar since my charge controller does not have one built in and the NEC requires it. The GFP also required a grounding rod to be installed for it to work properly. I ended up going with an 8 foot long 5 8 inch thick grounding rod for my application that would need to be fully inserted into the ground. To install the grounding rod, I tried using the water technique to help soften the ground as I rammed the rod into the ground. Also, be sure to call 811 or your local utility companies to verify that there are no utility lines below where you plan to install the grounding rod. Once the grounding rod was about 3 quarters into the ground, I used a sledgehammer to ease the process. I left about 3 inches of the grounding rod exposed so that I could attach the grounding rod clamp to the top and later attach the 6 gauge solid bare copper grounding wire. Next, I drilled a hole that I could pass my solar panel wire connections and grounding wire through. I plan to paint the outer surface of the hole at a later date. Next, I installed a weatherproof disconnect switch in an easy to access location since the NEC mentioned a disconnecting means should be provided to disconnect the PV system from all wiring systems and it should be installed in a readily accessible location. This disconnect switch is probably a little overkill for my small solar system, but as I expand my solar system in the future, I can use the same disconnect switch. I also like this disconnect switch because it already had the MC4 connectors pre-installed, which makes connecting my solar panel and electrical box to the disconnect really simple. Once the disconnect was in place, I installed my weatherproof electrical box. To house my battery and any other electrical components such as my Wi-Fi switch that allows me to remotely turn on my transfer pump, I used a plastic tote I purchased from Walmart. Next, I installed non-metal liquid type flexible conduit to run all my wire connections from and to the electrical box and totes. I used pre-wired flexible conduit for some of my application just to speed up the process and since I did not want to waste money buying a large spool of wire when I only needed a few feet worth. And the gauge size of the included wires allowed me to easily expand my system in the future. Next, I routed my grounding electro conductor to my grounded conductor bus bar in my electrical box. Or in other words, I ran my 6 gauge bare copper wire that was connected to my grounding rod to the bus bar dedicated for my grounded connections in my electrical box.
To reduce electrical shock hazards for my solar panel hardware, I grounded my solar panel frame and solar panel mount by installing a grounding lug onto both components and by using some leftover 6 gauge bare copper wire to bond the component to my grounded conductor bus bar in my electrical box. I also used what's called a K-lock nut to help make sure there was a proper bond between the solar metal components and grounding hardware and circuit. Next, I connected my PV disconnect box to my primary electrical box using MC4 connectors. I ended up watching some DIY videos online and making my own MC4 connectors for this short connection, but you can buy these connectors online pre-made. Once all my electrical connections were fastened up and all my flexible conduit was installed from both totes, I had finally reached an important milestone. This is the furthest I have taken a solar system installation to date because I wanted to try to increase my knowledge in the area and I'm sure there are probably some things I need to improve on or slightly modify. If you have been thinking about looking into solar, I want to urge you to not become victim to either analysis paralysis or lack confidence where you never take action. You will probably make mistakes along the way just as I have, but as long as you're learning from those mistakes, you will continue to grow and become wiser. Again, dealing with electricity can be extremely dangerous, so if you're new and have doubt, take action to reach out to a professional solar online community or sign up for local training for solar systems. In summary, this has been an eye-opener experience for how much goes into these systems and how much more I still need to learn. If you found this video useful or think others may take something away from the video, be sure to subscribe and like the video to encourage YouTube to share this video with others. And as I usually say, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.